the two biggest, biggest boosters in the biggest boosting game. Who will come out on top and who, which one is the better one? We will be telling you in this episode of Kaiwai. Audio Jungle. All of the opinions in this video are not mine. They are a collection of three different anonymous reviewers who have spent lots of time with the kites and have no reason not to tell me their honest opinions. With the XR6, you completely lose your ability to tell how windy it is because all of a sudden you're able to go 20, 30% higher than you normally would. So all of your like calibrations of like, okay, on a 10, I can usually go that in this much wind, like everything's gone. Someone will ask, how windy is it? And you're in the car park going, but how does it feel in the hands of the user? It feels fucked. It's like this weird combination of heavy bar pressure, but actually quite numb feeling. To put it in context, it's quite common for you to bend down to be doing up your boots because you're a gnarly boots and loops rider and like you think the kite's, I don't know, chilling at one o'clock. It isn't, mate. Yeah, it's like at half eight and it's too late for you to realize that. And it's... Most people, when they first fly the XR6, do not like it. They come back to me and go, no. And in light winds, it's like hitting nightclubs with your mum. You just, you know, you are meant to be having fun but like you're trying, but there's just no point and you sort of just want to go home. If you try like a back roll hand drag on it, it like spits at you. If you trim it to unhook, it will scoff at you. It just knows that you shouldn't be doing that on it. But this kite has a major reputation. You get it out of the bag at the beach and people do start looking at you. They know, everyone knows, that that kite goes the highest. People come up to you and ask about it. You'll get idiots trying to take it off you to have a go. People really feel like this kite has something that others just don't. And you know what? It does. Because this kite, the XR6, will outboost everything else. It honestly feels like cheating, the XR6. That's how good it is at boosting. Could it be something to do with the fact that the nine flies like a 10? and the 10 flies like an 11. Like, if I was running a kite brand and I wanted to make a big air kite, I would just play with the numbers a bit. But you can't take away from the fact that it does go higher than anything else. I don't care how good you are. Like, if I'm on an XR6 and you're not, I'm probably going higher than you. I think this comes down to the shape, which, I'm not, not going to do it with my hand, that's actually shit. We'll put up some sort of, we'll put up that you can have a look, look. But yeah, it's pretty high aspect. And the thing with, I'm doing the hand again. I'm going to have to do the hand. So the thing with high aspect is, it means long and thin, yeah? If you had a short but fat chode kite, you can see that if that was to move through the... Right. This is your standard height okay this you can do tricks on and it drifts in the way if you think if the winds come in here yeah and it's short and fat it's a little chode kite think about how much drag that's going to be creating yeah drag is inefficiency mate it's not what we want for jumping high whereas little butter knife our little xr6 here ooh, this isn't a good example because it hasn't got the same meterage, but pretend this is way longer. Yeah, this little butter knife. Yeah. This is high aspect. Yeah. And if you think about it, cutting through the air, way less drag, innit? If these were the same meterage, remember? It's not great. But I think what Core have done, I think the magic of the XR6 is actually in the bridles. It is a complex two pulley bridle system, that. Yeah. And the thing is with bridles, they've gone very much out of fashion of late. 
Uh, everyone's doing fixed point bridles where there's no moving parts, so there's no pulleys. The thing with bridles with pulleys are, is, are, is, they wear out. That's not great. They're quite prone to that kind of numb feeling that we talked about earlier because shit's moving above you and it's just you're not that well connected to it. But the third thing, yeah, is they auto adjust. That's what a bridle does. So when you get the R6 at 45 degrees and just fang it up to 12 as fast as you can whilst loading up at just humongous edge and perfectly timing it, yeah, that kite as it shifts up is auto adjusting so that it's always in the best position to absolutely crank you. Its angle of attack is always perfect. The Orbit is a pulleyless bridle system. It is seriously precise. The North Orbit is the king of the air winning kite. It's the one that really stamps North on the kite map. North was sort of ahead of the pack in that they were the first to design a kite specifically for king of the air in order to win it, and it did. You can turn the orbit with two fingers on the bar. The bar pressure is seriously light. The first generation of orbit was notorious for flying over your head and crashing in the sky like it was a nightmare at points. It needs constant maintenance, the orbit. The 2021 iteration is better, but it still does need babysitting the whole time. Like you can't forget about it. Any chance to misbehave and the orbit will take it. So yeah, you need to be onto it, flying it all the time, keeping it moving all the time. It's like leaving a toddler in a room full of, I don't know, chainsaws that are on. Yeah, you just, just shouldn't. Which I know sounds to you lot like an absolute bore, yeah, and something that the XR6, like, you just have no worries with it. It is so solid in the sky, the XR6. Now, I know what you're thinking, why have they, why have they done that? It's been designed to sit really far forward and it always wants to go forward. They've designed it to sit straight above you at all times so that when you boost, you're not going downwind at all you only go one direction. Right, let's talk about loops, okay? No kite has done more for the weekend warrior than the North Orbit. You go higher than you should on it, you just do. So when you loop it, you feel more confident because you've got more effortless height. When you loop an orbit, you know that it is gonna come and get you again. It's gonna get round, it's gonna climb back up, you're gonna be fine, mate. And that feeling has completely changed amateur kiteboarding. You go to a beach now and every idiot is able to do loops. That is completely different to what was happening five years ago when it, loops were like for this hardcore selection of like insanely talented riders. All you need now at your local spot is one idiot, one person that you just thought was utterly useless at kiteboarding, yeah? They start doing loops and you go, everyone goes, shit, surely, oh, I'm gonna have to do it now. Kite car parks across the land are now full of lingering mega loopers who are just sat there exchanging stories of like how massive it was and like, meh, did you see how big that was? I had to do so many heli loops on the way down. I actually got bored of heli. Put any stupid fucker on the orbit and they like it. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, easy to use, I, can, I get this. And for a lot of people, it'll be the kite that unlocks loops for them. Like, you just feel like you can do it. There's zero hesitation in that catch and very little pull. So it's quite confidence inducing. And that's the edge that the Orbit has over the XR6. Because do you know what? Looping the XR6 you don't want to do it. The XR6 loops like a turd. You you might be really high, yeah, but it's confidence sucking, the entire experience of looping on an XR6. You have to give it some serious yank. Like if you have tennis elbow, yeah, you're gonna hate it. The XR6 loops slow, seriously slow. Secondly, 
it hesitates big time yeah right when you wish it wouldn't as well right when you're up there and it's there right in front of you and you're like oh please catch me and it's going <laughs> i don't know whether i will shall i uh maybe if you're coming from like a sea kite you'll think the xr6 loops nice you'll be like this thing's great but if you're used to kites that are designed to actually catch you it's gonna drop you. So, the XR6 boosts bigger than any other kite ever. The Orbit loops better than any other beginnery loopy kite ever. Should you forget about the Orbit if you're not interested in loops? No, because you don't know that you're not interested in loops. Get on an Orbit and you might end up thinking, that's a bit of me. And secondly, it's still a great kite for boosting. Like, if you're coming from a kite that's not designed for big air onto the orbit, you will think it's, you know, just ridiculously good at that. It, you won't go as high as the XR6. You just won't. But you're still going higher than any other non-big air kite. And riding it's actually a pleasure. The orbit's fun to use. It's easy to throw around. You, you won't unhook on it. I don't care what they say in the advert, like you're not gonna. I know Tom Bridge can unhook on it and you know, he launched his North freestyle career on it, yeah, but like he's sort of God's gift to freestyle, so I wouldn't, don't, you know, don't look at him. The Orbit works no matter what you throw at it, whereas the XR6 is like a one trick pony. And that pony is seriously good at jumping. Like it's got it dialed. It's a sick pony. It's not like a Shetland. Because those, those, are, those are shit. They're like a dog with hairy feet. They're both well constructed. No complaints there. They both come with a bag. That's mint. They both... They... Right, so... If you just want to boost higher than everyone, XR6. If you want to do anything else like if you want to do kite loops if you want to do back roll hand drags anything else go orbit because it's way more versatile and it will still take you high and you've got the option to loop there i think that's the end of the first honest kite comparison ever made thank you to us as always if you appreciate this go buy us a beer this is tea i prefer beer links in the thing and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time where it's going to be Orbit 2022 versus Ozone Edge versus XR7 because that's now come out. I know I realise this is too late, but like COVID and that, yeah. Until then, thank you to me as always. See you in the next one.